Good day everyone! Today we're going to start a series explaining the various ways to use and apply Aether in our world. Aether, by its very nature, is energy in its purest form. It can become the ground you walk on, the air you breathe, the water you drink. It's an energy form that permeates everything in our world, and it's something we couldn't exist without. Everything we do involves Aether in one way or another, which is why almost every phenomena in our world can be traced back to it almost immediately. It cannot be overstated how much Aether touches everything we do. But before we start, allow me to explain that this is simply my attempt at combining everything I know into a new style of presentation. There is no singular source explaining everything we're about to discuss. It's scattered, and I've done my very best to arrange the pieces into what I feel is a more complete picture. So, with that disclaimer out of the way, let us begin. We'll start with the fundamentals of Aetherology. Everything in our world, big or small, is made of Aether on some level. It's the fundamental building block of our reality and the guiding rule maker of things like physics. Without it, we and our world wouldn't even exist. Which means you have Aether as well. Simply by the virtue of your existence, you've already begun to adjust Aether into more refined components. As a living entity, you're comprised of three ethereal parts. Memory, corporeal, and soul. But if you wish to simplify this even further, you can refer to these three ethereal forms as mind, body, and spirit. All three of these things working together make up who you are as an individual. Your body makes up the physical form, your memories help shape your perception as well as your personality, and your soul acts as your core, keeping the other two grounded at all times. Aether condensing into a physical, tangible form makes up the gross majority of all things in reality. This Aether is responsible for giving shape to everything. Meanwhile, the Aether that comprises the mind and spirit are a bit more tricky. As incorporeal, or rather, formless forms of Aether, they are invisible to both the naked and untrained eye, and most people wouldn't know they're being affected by it unless they're being told. So, for the sake of simplicity, we'll stay focused on material for now. If you all wish to learn about mental and spiritual Aether later down the road, I'll try to form a lecture on them. But in exchange, I expect you to share what you've learned here with your fellow adventurers. After all, gathering this data takes a lot of time, and as such, I wish to share it with as many people as I can. But let's move on to the physicality of Aether and what it means to you. Like we just discussed, you're made up of various types of Aether, which can be broken down even further into the six elemental affinities, as well as the astral and umbral aspects. Your body's Aether naturally tries to keep an almost perfect balance between these things on its own. However, while it's normal that someone's Aether may lean towards one element or aspect more than others, leaning too far in any direction does one of two things. It will either kill you like a poison, or turn you into a mindless monster of that element. I bring this up to remind everyone how important it is for your body's Aether to stay in relative balance at all times. The alternative is unpleasant. But if your Aether is healthily balanced and you have a deep enough personal pool of it, you can perform all sorts of fantastical and magical feats. Almost everyone in the world has a deep enough pool of Aether to use at least basic magic or physical enhancement. The only exceptions to this rule are those that possess congenital disorders that either cut off their access to Aether or stifle its flow making their personal pool too shallow to draw upon, else they could die. The most common example of this would be the pure-blooded Garleans and their inability to use magic. But since these are usually exceptions and not the rule, we're free to explore what it means to tap into etheric potential. Most people in the world don't make use of their Aether, even though it's always there. And to be fair, unless you plan on becoming a mage or famous warrior, You've no real reason to tap into it since using your Aether without training can be bad for your health. But the safest method of using your Aether by far is physical empowerment. Have you ever wondered why a Dragoon is able to jump to heights normally impossible? Or how a warrior is able to cleave the very earth with a single swing of their axe? This isn't just physical training. 
The thing empowering their bodies to perform these feats is their aether. Unlike spellcraft, this form of aetheric control doesn't project itself outwards into magic. Instead, it's made to strengthen your body and safely push it past its natural limits, if only for a moment. Even pure-blooded Garleans can do this, making them into dangerously strong melee combatants. That being said, even famous fighters throughout the world who've never cast a spell in their life have still used Aether in one way or another. So, let us begin by addressing how you can apply this. Imagine your pull of Aether as a river that constantly flows through your body. This river can be agitated to flow more forcefully for a brief moment, increasing the strength of your attacks, the power of your defense, and allowing your body to move at speeds that the common man can only imagine. It may look magical, when in reality, your body is simply operating on another level thanks to your Aether. The first step to realizing this power is physical training. Increasing your body's strength, endurance, and tolerance for things like pain is rather necessary. Your body needs to be prepared for the sudden burst of energy you're going to be forcing through yourself. This is why Dragoon training is so difficult. Not only does the person in question need to be in peak physical condition, but they must also have a talent for aetheric control to the point that they can leap massive distances without hurting themselves. Normally, this process could take years, but if you're an adventurer, then your body is likely already trained enough to practice with aetheric empowerment. Anyone, regardless of their choice of discipline, can do this. It's simply a question of how much time and training are you prepared to spend refining these techniques. Which brings us to the fastest way to learn physical empowerment, soul crystals. An aged soul crystal is able to condense lifetimes of experiences into months worth of training, shortening the training process exponentially and helping you reach that peak faster than normally possible. However, there's one massive flaw that you must understand if you attune to a soul crystal. You're fundamentally limited to what the crystal already knows. Yes, the crystal will teach you and help your body move in ways similar to its previous owners. But that's the problem. You're simply mimicking what has already come to pass. Unless you're prepared to make those teachings your own and expand on them in your own way, you'll never realize your true potential. Which means you'll have to do more than just train. You'll need to experiment. With your body now able to experience the intense power and speed brought on by your Aether, it's time to learn how to make that strength your own. Paladins can reinforce their body, taking hits that most people would be knocked down by. Samurais can move at blinding speeds. Meanwhile, bards can continuously draw their bows without tiring. A normal soldier may seem weak by comparison, but this is a false observation. The soldier is likely plenty stronger than the common man, but Aetheric Empowerment takes someone that much further. Whether it be for defense, offense, or endurance, you'll always overpower those who aren't using this talent. But this doesn't mean you're invincible. Your body still has its limits, and will grow tired eventually. Make sure to take rest when you can, and allow your Aether to flow normally. This will keep you balanced, and ensure you're prepared to fight at your peak all over again. To clarify what we've discussed, let us use an example. And what better discipline to pull from than that of the monks? The monks of Garibania tap into and rely on the power of their Aether in every battle. Except, their view on Aetheric Empowerment is so much more refined. Like we discussed, they recognize that Aether flows through us like a river. But they also discover that there are seven gates in our bodies that act as limiters. The function these gates serve are to ensure that your Aether doesn't flow recklessly and spill out of your body. This is why most disciplines can only release their power in small bursts. The gates forbid your Aether from flowing any more than necessary. But the monks have learned to safely control these gates, allowing that river to flow more like an ocean, turning their body into a living weapon. Mind you, these gates don't prevent you from using your Aether they only exist to stop too much from being used at once. In short, they're saving your life. 
though to be fair, if you're already using Ethereal Empowerment, a burst of energy is likely all you need to defeat most opponents. Monsters rely too heavily on their instincts, and even trained gladiators rarely use their Aether in a fight. So take what we've discussed to heart. Train yourself, learn your limits, and push them so that you can stand tall against any foe. Bring not only your physical strength and skill to a fight, show your opponent the intensity of your very being. And that, my friends, will wrap up our introductory lesson on Aether and the ways you can use it. If you enjoyed this explanation, don't be afraid to say so. In fact, I would posit you a question. Now, knowing what you know about Aetheric Empowerment, what techniques or applications of this craft would you create, and why? There are many disciplines and jobs that use Aether in this way, but there are likely many more that we haven't seen. Mayhaps you'll be the one to try something new one day. And with that in your mind, I'll end it here. So, till next we meet, stay safe my friends. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Big shout out to my patrons, Rovacus, Monsolo97, Potato, Runatir, The Yellow Couch, Papaya Cyan, and Vavala Soma. If you want to see more lore content in the future, share this with your friends. My dream is to share as much as I find with as many people as possible. And if you do end up helping me, thank you so much in advance. And have a wonderful day.